The internet is full of strange and disturbing things. Some things make you wonder. Some make you frightened. While others will chill you to the bone. I have a collection of recent happenings on the internet that will give you a mixture of mystery and disturbing. All right, we're going to underhouse exploration. This is everything unsettling found on the internet. This post made on Reddit in the subreddit Ghost reads, Anyone have any clue what this could be? I always thought there was a ghost in my house, but never picked up anything this creepy on camera. Any help would be appreciated. This picture looks to be somebody relaxing on the couch, has a face mask on and hair up. Not being funny, I'm home alone. And in the background, you can see a very spooky picture. It looks to be something with long hair appearing around the corner in the stairwell. One person in the subreddit said, have you checked everything in your house? I don't mean to freak you out, but you could have something living in your walls. Another user said, this looks very similar to something that my daughter saw years ago behind in her mirror. She was about 10 at the time, 15 years ago. She wouldn't be able to make it up. She described it as having a white face similar to war paint and black paint around the eyes and lips and long black hair. She was in the shower before and heard her phone fall off the counter. When she got out, she was facing the mirror and this thing was behind her. But when she turned around, nothing was there. Scared her to death. Her friend claims she saw the same thing afterwards, but I don't know if I believe that. She hasn't seen it since, thankfully, but she can still describe the entity in the mirror as if it happened yesterday. This was found in the Rio Grande River, which cuts between Texas and Mexico. It looks like a strange doll. Look how creepy the hands are. And why is it wrapped up? It was floating down the river. In a Facebook post, it says, They found a ventriloquist doll in the Bravo River and found it does not burn. Now, this doll made everyone really want to research of what it actually is. One user says, In Colombia, there's a powerful one called Ivan. They tried to burn it and couldn't. The weirdest thing is that it gets smiley every time you try. The second, almost identical doll was found in another river. A ventriloquist doll was found in the San Juan River. Navajo Nation police found a body in the San Juan River, near the Shiprock Traffic Bridge. We believe this object may belong to someone local, or it could be possible it floated down the river from Farmington, New Mexico. The only clue we have at this time is the initial VB. 1995, carved into the wooden doll's leg. People on Reddit started to freak out. One user says, put it back. I was bound and placed in the river for a reason. They are messing with someone's spiritual belief. It's a cultural thing. I can't believe they do not know this in Shiprock. Another user said, one night years ago, Harbor police pulled what they thought was a body from the water near the Eastport Bridge. It turned out to be a Halloween decoration. These things happen. Now, in the history of trying to burn things that are possessed or evil, it doesn't work. You only piss off whatever entity is attached to it even more. You need a binding spell, and then you discard wherever where a human will never find it. This has bad juju all over it. One user said, someone said it was likely from a mariachi dummy, and in the bottom left photo, you can make out the shape of an acoustic guitar. Maybe a ukulele? Perhaps once used in a street performances, and later abandoned for who knows why. This next one comes from the subreddit Glitch in the Matrix. This post reads, This is one of the weirdest phone calls I ever received. When I was like 17, I had a girlfriend that I used to call a lot, and we spent hours just talking about dumb things. One night, it was almost midnight, I called her and she started talking about school. Suddenly over the phone, we started to hear some sort of weird woman's voice calling our names. We asked each other, did you hear that? And confirmed that we both did. We kept talking and we heard it again. This time it said our names and something we couldn't understand. Suddenly, it screamed in the way it just hurt my ears and the call dropped. I called her back immediately to ask what it was. She was crying and completely scared. We tried to change the subject because of that and it never happened again. 
At the beginning, I thought the line probably just got mixed up. It was at a time that cell phones started to make changes. And probably it was something that could have happened because of technology of the time. But there was no reason for it to tell our names. To this day, I still have no clue about what happened and almost completely forgot about it till yesterday that she reminded me. We are still in contact and best friends. I decided to post this here to see what your thoughts are. If this is on a landline, there's something called crosstalk, which is when the distance of wire could be closed together and not properly isolated, which causes you to hear another person. This happened to my grandmother, and it was the person down the road she was hearing. Also, landlines back then could easily be switched or tapped into, especially if the infrastructure was old and most of the guys that pulled this kind of thing had better technology means. So I think that the original post is a false memory, as stuff like this can easily be done with the correct equipment. On the subreddit, no stupid questions, the user tjrow11 asks, can being homeschool, isolated from peers, be damaging to you? I've been homeschooled since 2009, since the age of six. I have not been allowed to have friends, join activities, and I've been in my room 24 seven since. Parents also refuse to teach me to drive, let me go to family get togethers, let me have a job. They refuse to give me my social security number. Immediately, the Reddit community started posting. This person is enslaved, imprisoned, being accused and needs to help to be set free. I have no doubt their internet access will be taken away once it's discovered. Although the person is apparently about 18, if there is any child protective services in the region, it needs to be alerted. The parents are criminals or psychologically abnormal, and the person needs to be liberated from that. I've known similar cases where a parent withheld standard ID documents in order to keep the kid trapped in the source of labor. It's a bad situation. If you are the person who are reading this, your safety is important to us. And do not do anything that will provoke your parents. Slowly gather some resources in preparation for leaving and seeking help. Keep things casually hidden so it doesn't look like you're prepping to leave. If things get really abusive, you may need to hike out. So keep a couple of extra pairs of socks to protect your feet. If they lock you in, it's definitely criminal abuse. It is clear they are blocking all outside contact and attempt to control you. That does not bode well. The torn bead tiles are messages of unknown origin found embedded in asphalt of streets in about two dozen major cities in the United States and four South African cities since the 1980s. Several hundred tiles have been discovered. They are generally about the size of an American license plate, but sometimes considerably larger. They always contain a variation of the following inscriptions. Toyin B idea, in movie 2001, resurrect dead, on planet Jupiter. Some of these more elaborate tiles also feature cryptic political statements or exert readers to create and install similar tiles of their own. The material used for making the tiles was initially unknown, but evidence has emerged they may be primarily made of layers of linoleum and asphalt cracking filling compound. Articles about the tiles began appearing in the 1990s and even the 1980s. Here's one of the many tiles. In the United States, tiles have been officially been cited as far west as Kansas City, Missouri, and as north as Boston, Massachusetts, and as far as Washington, D.C. since 2002. Very few new tiles considered to be the work of the original artist have appeared outside the immediate Philadelphia area, although one notable sighting appeared in suburban Connecticut in 2006, and one appeared in Etzen, New Jersey in 2007. Presumed copycat tiles have been spotted in Noblesville, Indiana, Buffalo, New York, and on the West Coast, including San Francisco, California, Portland, Oregon, and Roswell, New Mexico. Additional tiles have been spotted in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2013 and Detroit, Michigan in 1997. Many older tiles considered to be the work of the original tiler have been eroded by traffic. But as of 2011, older tiles remain in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, St. Louis, Missouri, Cincinnati, and Cleveland, Ohio, 
and South America, among other locations. On June 19th of 2013, tiles resembling the Toen B tiles appeared on the streets in Topeka, Kansas. They were removed by the evening of the next day. Less than a month later, on July 17th of 2013, a tile resembling the Toen B tiles appeared on the street in Salt Lake City, Utah. Newer tiles have been embedded on several major highways, including Interstate 476 in Delaware County and on Interstate 95. About six more were found in the U.S., one northbound starting in Drexel Hill in Delaware County in 2007 and 2008. The plates are much larger than the originals and have red italic writing on them. Toen B. Tile enthusiast Justin Dewar claims to have once found and examined a newly installed tile. This new tile was wrapped in tar paper and placed on a busy street early in the morning. From this find and other evidence, Dura believes that the pressure exerted by automobiles driving over the tile for weeks on end pushes the tile into the road surface. Eventually, the tar paper wears away, exposing the message. Justin Juro said that he considered the tiles to be the work of a single person and attributed them to a reclusive Philadelphia resident, Severnio Sevi Verna. Dura believed that Verna used the name James Murasako as an alias. The streets surrounding Verna's residence were littered with small prototype tiles that Dura believed were tests, and ham radio enthusiasts reported Verna might have broadcasted a message via shortwave radio about his theories. Based on comments from Verna's neighborhood about him driving a car without a passenger seat, Dura suspected Verna placed the tiles through a hole in the floor of his car. My friend and I found this in my backyard today. I have other pics of this and what I think is a living space in the crawl space under my house. This man found what looks to be a human bone in the crawl space of his home. From the looks of the bone, it looks like there are saw marks. Many people were stumped at what the bone could be, so the user that posted the picture of the bone also posted a video on more images. All right, we're going to underhouse exploration. Oh, be careful, there's nails. Also, oh, yeah, you're going to have to crouch. I ain't been down here in years. Literally. I don't even know if it works, so let's not. It's like a switch. I'll just leave it. Right. This is an old ass TV. What the hell? I don't remember a lot of us being down here. I'm gonna be real. Is that a, a chair? Okay. What is that? interested in over there. I haven't been there. Stuff to sleep on in the middle. Oh, I told you I've been 
here and shit back there. And we had that homeless dude who lived down here in a shed for a while. He set up a new spot and goes out during the day. Because I always hear that shit at night. Mm -hmm. There's no one there. People on Reddit started to speculate what could have happened in the crawl space. Some thought it could have been a squatter that lived under the home and passed away, as the original poster said he found bottles and a cardboard box that was being used as a mattress. After much speculation from the Reddit community, they came to the conclusion the bone is from a spiral cut ham, probably brought into the crawl space by the squatter. Imagine falling asleep on the couch and waking up to this terrifying cartoon on the TV screen. This happened to the user Cactus Cooler on Reddit. He said he was watching Fox 8 before he fell asleep for two hours, just to be awoken by this. Some believe it is sleep paralysis of a demon caught on video. If anything, it is really nightmare fuel. But as the Reddit community started to do more research, they came to a conclusion. I'm guessing it's some obscure foreign cartoon if the original poster was asleep for two hours while watching TV, there could have been a time where someone could have switched stations. I'm not sure how likely that is though, and I'm not sure about the language either. But the comment says it could be Russian, and if you look it up on YouTube, they do have a lot of very odd children's cartoon animations. It's pretty interesting. The original poster said the channel was Fox 8, and the programming right after the Big Bang Theory. Around the time the post was posted, the Big Bang Theory would indeed have been playing on Fox 8. Whatever it was doesn't seem to show up on the programming guide though. The show that was playing previous to Big Bang Theory was the Big Chuck and Little John show, which is an older show that looks similar. Then, a YouTube video was found by a Russian animator. Could this be part of the animation? This person received a strange voicemail in the middle of the night. It sounds that the person is in a lot of distress and is hyperventilating. One user says, wait, oh my god, that is real, and someone you know was probably calling for help, or Miss Dial reported it. If they could track it, you could save another victim. Another user said, I received this exact voicemail when I was staying in Portland, Oregon. Scared the crap out of me. Called all of my closest female friends to make sure they were safe and whatnot. After some Googling, I convinced myself that it was a scam, but you can never be sure. A while ago, I want to say it was on YouTube. I heard about scammers using this tactic. They send creepy voicemails and sometimes people just saying help. Can't remember how they scam people with it. I'll try to look it up. These scammers are getting pretty smart. Hopefully that's all it is. A user came across a pretty weird thread on the B board. The original poster posted a picture of Lisa Irwin and coordinates. Lisa Irwin went missing on October 20th of 2011. Here's what I've learned so far. The first photograph is an age progression photo of Lisa Irwin, a child that went missing as an infant. She went missing October 20th of 2011. The parents believe it was an abduction based on the video showing a man leaving a wooded area around 2.30 a.m. on the night of Lisa's disappearance. Several witnesses came forward having seen a strange man carrying a baby seemingly only wearing a diaper. One witness called police to report it. 
I have found an article claiming that the man was found and questioned and was a dead lead. Lisa was abducted in Kansas City. The GPS coordinate posted on the B thread pointed to the middle of the woods area west of Kansas City, close by a lake. Interestingly, there is some kind of building to the east of the GPS marker, and on satellite images, it seems to be showing a few cars and possibly an adjacent house. This building is clearly very secluded and hidden well off the main road. There, the road leading to the building doesn't even seem to be an actual road. It's clearly a very secluded area in general, with the few scattered houses being very far apart. This is a cold case, although there were clothes discovered in the neighborhood dumpster and a cadaver dog that smelled something in Lisa's parents' bedroom. As far as I understand, the parents have cooperated with police and there is still residue in the same house. The last time I can find news coverage is from last year. Nonetheless, this is a very creepy post.